Normally I start my hikes early in the morning, but in this case it wasn't until about one o'clock in the afternoon before I managed to pack up and get going, but that's okay. Passing through the suburban enclave of Sammamish, Washington, I soon got onto the freeway and headed into the mountains. The Cascades have hundreds, if not a couple of thousand, of beautiful hikes and trails, lakes, rivers, and views to enjoy. From this trailhead, you can go to Granite Mountain, Telepus Lake, Alali Lake, and Pratt Lake. This makes it one of the most popular places to start your hike from. On this hike, I was going to be doing about seven miles, elevation gain of 2,446 feet, and the highest point would be 3,880 feet. According to the U.S. Forest Service, there's 1,500 miles of trails in the Mount Baker's Tuqualmie National Forest. If you've watched my granite mountain hike, you'll notice at this juncture, I took a right up the hill. In this case, we're continuing on to Alali Lake. This is a late summer hike, so those streams that would normally be there are mere trickles this time of the year. All Trails considers this a moderately challenging trail. I found it to be more moderate than challenging. Most of the trail is just like this, packed down dirt with just a few roots and rocks to walk over. If you go on this trail, watch out for this part here. It's not so much dangerous as some of the wood's a little old and a little weak. So just watch where you're walking. In decades past, this area is logged extensively, but occasionally you can still find a few old trees like this one. The sign says Talapus Lake to the left, which will also take you to Alali Lake. I'm not sure, but I think it's required by Washington state law that if you take this trail, you're required to film or photograph this little wooden bridge. After arriving at Alali Lake, I walked around for a while looking for a good location to set up my hammock. And this was perfect. Too sloped to put a tent, but for a hammock? Just perfect. And this is the view from my campsite. Gorgeous, isn't it? Pacific Northwest trees tend to have a little more girth to them, and so I always bring an extra strap to be able to get around the tree and then connect to the strap, which will actually go to my hammock. For this trip, I'm using my cinch buckles. Sometimes they're a little tricky to undo, but I find them to be very easy to use and sturdy and stable. ridge line is just a simple mason line with a carabiner attached at one end. The other end goes around the tree and through the prussic knot that I have pre-attached to my ridge line. What I'm going to do is pull that through the prussic knot which will then bite down on the line making a nice secure fit and then I'll tie it off with a slippery half hitch. My 
my rainfly has a loop in the middle which I attach a carabiner or two and then I attach that to the ridge line and then I have another carabiner at one corner which I attach to a preset pressing knot same thing at the other end and this is a simple matter of cinching them nice and tight so that I've got nice coverage over my entire hammock one corner I found this convenient log with a branch on it that I could hook to. In the other corner I attached my preferred bungee cords and wrapped them around a tree. Pro tip for lighting your alcohol stove. Dunk a stick into the alcohol, light the stick, and then dunk the stick into the alcohol rather than trying to light it with your lighter and burning your fingers. Dinner is some top ramen with some beef jerky bits tossed in there for extra protein and flavor. Alcohol stoves take longer to cook up the food, but that's okay. I don't have anywhere to go, and I have this view. And I don't care how humble the food is, how long it took, when you're sitting by an alpine lake, relaxing and enjoying the view, it's delicious. Listen carefully. Do you hear that? What is making that noise? Is that what the meeting call of Sasquatch sounds like? I hope not. Strange sounds in the forest at night notwithstanding, it was finally time to get to sleep. And then I heard this. Thankfully it was not Sasquatch's mating call, it was a barred owl, and they must have been directly over my campsite. Despite the local barred owls having a lengthy conversation overhead during the night and dropping little twigs and things onto my rain fly, that's what it's there for sometimes, it's just to catch the twigs from the animals above me, I woke up, rest and relaxed, and ready to start a new day and greet the beautiful, beautiful dawn. First order of business is to collect and filter some water for my cooking and the hike back to the trailhead. I prefer to use the one gallon water bag for my Sawyer water filter. I don't have to make as many trips to the water source and I can fill all three or four liters of water bottles quickly and easily from it. Breakfast is a simple bowl of porridge and some granola and, well, the view. I dawdled over breakfast and watched the sun come up. After breakfast, it was time to break camp. After packing everything up, I check around my campsite, make sure I haven't left anything behind and left a trace of my campsite. All looks good so it was time to check where I cooked up my food and ate my meals.
No scraps or litter or anything left behind. Looks good. So with one last look at the lake and the rising sun, it was time to head home. I hope you've enjoyed this hike with me and this camp out. And as always, my friends, I hope to see you out there.